We are now joined by one of our special counsels here, as senior counsels for global affairs at the ACLJ. You've heard him here all the time. Secretary Mike Pompeo is joining us. Thanks for having us, or thanks for coming. It's great to be with you. Dad, I'll let you take it from hey, here. Mike. Yeah, thanks, Logan. Uh, Mike, I want to. We uh, we're going to get to you. You've got a brand new article up at ACLJ.org. I want to talk about in a moment. But we've been talking about the uh, the situation in Texas on this abortion case, where the Supreme Court denied a stay five to four, and yet the judge, uh, when the Department of Justice entered into the case, uh, issues a hundred and three or hundred and four page opinion that uh, basically says we don't. I don't care what other courts say. This is unconstitutional. And then we've got the Dobbs case, of course, which is going to decide probably the fate of Roe versus Wade. But this issue of life, uh, we're representing, the ACLJ is representing Governor Nome in the state of uh, South Dakota in an informed consent case that's uh, going to the U.S. Court of Appeals for the Eighth Circuit. But you look at all of this happening simultaneously and the fact that Roe may actually uh, go and there'll be some other framework put in place if Roe does go. But the abortion issue seems to still be front and center. But the point I wanted to make is during your administration, which was a pro-life administration, things got done for the pro-life cause that had never happened under any Republican president. And in just one change of an election, you've now got the administration, the Biden administration, suing to, to declare this law. They don't think Planned Parenthood could do this by themselves. They have to have the United States enter these cases now. Jay, we, we in everything we did, believe that protecting every human life, treating every human being with the dignity they deserve because they are made in the image of a creator was important. It was important uh, as a a domestic matter to make sure we supported states who were trying to get their laws right. You see this in Dobbs. um, You see what Texas is doing. We we did it around the world. We made sure that your taxpayer dollars, the American people's money, didn't go to supporting groups that were referring to abortion or funding abortion, and your point's well taken. Within a few weeks of taking office, the Biden administration turned this all on its head and now is probably the most uh, pro-abortion administration that we have seen in at least 30 or 40 years, so certainly in the post-Roe time frame. You know, my second thought, as you recount what's taking place, is we, we watched this spending legislation, $3.5 trillion before. They're trying to take the Hyde Amendment out. This is something that was was sacrosanct in both political parties for so long with respect to how abortions could not be supported by U.S. taxpayer money. This is a pretty radical set of ideas. I think the American people are are seeing through this. And the reason I think you're seeing so much work to protect life take place in our courts today is because I think the American people, by and large, can see the horrors of abortion. They can see what it leaves the the women who have the abortions uh, from a, a mental standpoint, and they can see that this is the right course of the right course of our nation. Uh, no, no other country has as many late terms abortions as the United States does. We should, uh, we should work to eliminate that. Okay, I'm gonna, I appreciate that, and I, I agree 100%. I want to switch gears. You've had an article up on ACLJ.org called "There's a Crisis on the Southern Border, and It's Only Getting Worse." You bring, uh, you brought up months ago that our border was overwhelmed at the breaking point. Things do not seem to be getting any better. You twi- the reports are that up to, Mike, 12,000 migrants, I mean, have just been released within the United States. And, and the, the havoc that this brings on communities, and let alone the people that have been released, shows just, a, I think, either a callous disregard for the humanity involved or just a lack of understanding of the scope and nature of the, of the issue that's at play here. Jay, the ACLJ, as you know, right, you, you all have done such great work on these two issues. We just talked about the protection of human life, and now we're talking about protecting the United States from the threat that comes from having wide open borders, lit- literally chaos at our southern border. I think the number far exceeds 12,000. I, I understand that there are still thousands and thousands of Haitians that are making their way to our southern border. There's no reason to believe the Biden administration is going to do so much as even attempt to more than maybe slow them down for a few hours. This is a, a national security risk. Uh, I've written about the fact that now we have more fentanyl coming across our border. This is going to be enormously destructive to small communities all across America, including in my home state of Kansas. These are th- these are these are things that I never thought I would see happen in the United States because they reflect such an utter disregard for the American people. To to open those borders and not to secure American sovereignty presents a, a real real risk to families all across this country, not just the border states, but all across the country. You know, it's interesting, Mike, also, when you talk about the, what's going on at the border, you had the vice president talk about the root causes. And, and she listed as a root cause for this migration crisis that we're seeing. And they don't like calling it a crisis, but that's what it is. 
global warming and climate change. And I'm thinking to myself, do you think there's, if you took, if you talk to all 12,000 people that are on our borders right now and said, are you leaving your country of origin because of climate change? There's not one person that's going to say, oh yeah, if the climate change thing is a really big deal for me. I want to leave. But that's, they think that's a root cause. They're so committed to political correctness, they're ignoring the reality of what's going on. No, she's of the left. They are of the left. They are so disconnected from the, the, the gritty reality that is our border and the work that needs to be done to protect these border communities. Remember, this is the same vice president, just as an aside, just the same vice president who nodded her head when a student said that the state of Israel was an apartheid country. Right. This is the progressive left's effort to undermine the central thesis of our founding, our nation, and what you see at the borders is a part of that. They, they simply reject the idea that America is an exceptional country founded on a set of very important ideas, and they think, nope, we, um, we're, we're the problem. Let's just open our borders because uh, we need to let these folks in to atone for the sins of our past. You know, Mike, I found it astonishing, astonishing and troubling that when that student made those derogatory comments about the only democracy of the type in the Middle East that, that even resembles a, a true democracy, and we've got a lot of allies in the Middle East, so I'm not, I'm not, you know, not every country can have Jeffersonian democracy, I get it. But Israel has been a democratic state, and I use that in the proper term, uh, as far as the way the government is st- structured, and it's been our strongest ally. And for then the vice president of the United States to get a question like that and not say, hey, now, wait a minute. Israel protects rights more than anybody else in the region. Israel's our vital ally on national security issues. But she could not get herself to do it. And what does that tell us? Yeah, it tells us at her core, this, these are the things she believes. And while she may have tried to call some of her supporters in the Jewish community in the aftermath of that event, we, we know that in the moment she spoke the truth about what she really believes, that this is a that Israel's right to exist is is fundamentally inconsistent with peace and stability in the Middle East, that the Jewish homeland is somehow fraught with the baggage that she brings to it instead of being a, a noble democracy in the Middle East where Arabs, where uh, where Muslims, is, uh, Jews, and Christians can all practice their faith. Jay, this is, this is the one nation there that has the capacity for religious freedom and the one democracy, and they're an important security partner for the United States. And we had a student make a comment about Israel— the fact that it was a terrible country, an occupying nation, an apartheid country, and our vice president simply said, well, you, you, you're entitled to your truth, as if there was some truth to what the student had said. It's, uh, it's frankly disgusting. Poor choice. Yeah, terrible choice of words, terrible, terrible moment for American diplomacy. Uh, Mike Pompeo, Senior Counsel for Global Affairs for the American Center for Law and Justice. Mike Pompeo also served as the director of the Central Intelligence Agency, Secretary of State, member of Congress. Uh, I, you know, what a background and credentials. Thanks for being part of the team, Mike. It really means a lot to us. And I want to thank our donors for making that happen. But thank you uh, for your insight here.